sommes ici tout à fait au début de l'intervention. Le tympan, vous le voyez, a été relevé, ce qui permet de voir les différents osselets qui s'y trouvent. Au milieu, ici, se trouve l'enclume, vous voyez, et en dessous, l'étrier. So you see this is a right, uh, right ear, uh, supposed to be autosclerosis, uh, although the uh, CT scan didn't show any, any special things. Uh, so we're going to start with this uh, incudial staple joint separation, then checking the osseculate chain mobility. Voilà, on va séparer maintenant l'enclume de l'étrier. But I think there is a probably uh, malus ankylosis because I can see already by, by doing this that the stapes is completely mobile and stapes and, and, and malus is fixed. We're going to check it now. Voilà, j'ai séparé donc l'enclume de l'étrier. On va tester maintenant. Je pense qu'il ne s'agit pas d'une autospongeuse mais d'un blocage du marteau. You see it's completely fixed malus incus complex. You see that. If I move the malus, there's no movement in the incus. Whereas the uh, stapes is completely mobile and perfectly, perfectly mobile. Okay, so there we go. So we have, interestingly, I've already published papers on that, but uh, malus ankylosis is related to uh, a, a normally shaped uh, epitympanic space, which is very narrow. And progressively, with time, the malus becomes in contact with the epitympanic wall and be, being fixed to the epitympanic wall. I've never, I've never seen any uh, ligament fixation of the malus. You see, it's very fixed, and really, really strongly fixed. Alors, uh, current. So I need to enlarge the bone in room resection in order to be able to work on the malus and then on removing the incus. But the first step is to increase the bone in room resection. Because I, as you know, I will try to relocate the malus, and I don't want to see the, the malus coming, becoming in contact with the with the bone of the posterior part of the wall. There's no history of uh, head trauma, but it's what we can see, there's a kind of uh, fracture line here on the bone. So it's interesting to see that, but there's no history of that. Okay. Voilà, donc là j'ai un petit peu élargi la vue. On va pouvoir maintenant travailler sur le marteau. So the next step will be to work on the malus. I will use the fact that the incus is fixed with the malus to leave it like this and to work on the malus because it gives me some resistance and helps for the dissection of the malus. Quel est mon marteau? Voilà, on va maintenant travailler sur le marteau, le premier osselet qu'il faut que je libère euh, du tympan. Well, this is the quarter tympani, which I try to preserve, of course. We have some adherence. We have some bleeding. One of the thing that I, I've seen in case of malus ankylosis is that I've seen that and in many cases uh, there was a really narrow, more or less narrow canal and uh, epitympanic space, that's true. So here we go here. Table en avant. I need to move the table anteriorly. Stop. Je vais essayer, stop. Je vais essayer de travailler maintenant sur le marteau parce que c'est assez difficile dans la mesure où c'est très étroit. Calmer le manche du marteau. So I tried to have a, a better view of the malice, which is not easy, as you can see, because I want to dissect the malice and to separate the malice entirely from the tympanic membrane. This is the first step of the malice relocation technique. I don't want to leave it like this, because there is a gap between the malice and the staple's head. And of course, we can use a, a porp, but as you know, in my practice, I use, uh, in most of the cases, I try to use torp, with the stylastic bending technique, so I, I will, of course, use a combination of both uh, malus relocation plus uh, stylastic bending. Difficult thing is that I have a really narrow canal, so I, I can't see the entire part of, of the malus. Voilà, donc on va essayer de continuer à séparer ce marteau du tympan. I have to go through the short process of the malus here. You can see already how, how much the how the uh, malus is fixed. It doesn't move at all. It's 
So I try to follow the bone because I cannot completely control uh, the entire part of the uh, entire part of the tympanic membrane. So I, I need to follow the bone to try to avoid making any tear. And this is not easy here. In the past, of course, I was cutting the neck of the malleus and using the mobile part of the malleus, the handle. But uh, I changed my toward the uh, malleus relocation technique. But in this case, because we are very close to the anterior wall, you can see how difficult it is to dissect the malleus. vraiment très difficile de disséquer le marteau dans votre cas parce que j'ai pas beaucoup de vision sur la partie antérieure donc je suis obligé de vraiment d'y aller tout doucement. Really a step by step procedure. If, even if I move uh, the microscope or the table, I cannot completely see it. So I'm here at the level of the umbo. But if there is any tear, it will be a limited tear, and then I will use a vein to close the tear. Je continue ici. Je suis passé maintenant de l'autre côté. I'm anterior to the malice now. Can be normal. C'est normal, ça? I may need to, to push a little bit more the uh, flap. Kennedy? Le plafond. You see, here is the bone of the anterior wall, so we are very close. This is the problem. Kennedy, normal. Bon, on va continuer, il faut absolument que j'arrive à le séparer complètement. Pour l'instant, ce n'est pas le cas, ça a bien avancé, mais il n'y est pas encore. En plus, j'ai un lambeau qui est épais, donc évidemment, la vue est cachée très vite. The view is hidden, uh, you can see, due to the thickness of the skin also. The, uh... Difficult to find a gap. Bon, c'est vraiment très difficile de trouver l'espace là pour pouvoir passer devant. Est-ce que j'arrive pas à descendre? Let me see what we have here with the. Uh uh, tympanic membrane. I need to check the tympanic membrane. I may need to drill out this anterior wall if I, if, if needed. Bon, je vais peut-être être obligé de fraiser un peu d'os du conduit pour pouvoir euh, disséquer le marteau. Ça devient difficile. J'ai pas d'espace du tout. Et pourtant, ça devrait passer là. On va essayer quand même. On va voir. Vous voyez qu'il y a à la fois l'épaisseur de la peau et so we have both the uh, thickness of the skin and the very narrow gap that we have. So I was checking the integrity of the, uh, the skin, which is the case.
Okay, let's drill out this bone because otherwise I won't be able to dissect the Marius sandal. Décolleur, s'il vous plaît. <coughs> Il faudra que je fraise un petit peu cette partie osseuse ici parce que sinon je ne vais pas arriver. Je n'ai pas beaucoup à enlever, mais ça va me permettre de gagner en visibilité parce que là vraiment j'y arrive pas. Il ne faut pas dé disséquer le, le marteau sans risquer de blesser le tympan. Là, il faut vraiment qu'on fraise ici, vous voyez, toute la partie antérieure. So I, I will drill out this area. Not very much. I just need to still a better view of the uh, uh, Malus angle. So I just need to drill out the anterior part of the wall. <coughs> vous donnez une petite lame de silastique, s'il vous plaît. So I will pull a silastic sheet to protect the skin and then use... Uh, a small uh, cutting burr to drill out the bone. Voilà, on va donc fraiser cet os en avant. This still, of course, transcanal. I do only a transcanal approach. big one. Uh, I use the, uh, I'm going to use this one first, maybe too big. Si c'est trop bon, pendant celle-là, prenez celle-là d'abord. Celle-là d'abord La grosse. I don't think it's enough. I need to drill it up more. Not very much, but more than this. You can see that then it, it goes down. It's kind of a big exostosis, anterior exostosis, or more form uh, aspect of the anterior wall. I think it's fine. We're going to try now. I don't want to drill out too much. We don't need that. So let's see if it's better. If needed, I will drill out more. La place, s'il vous plaît. Okay, so I'm going to remove now the uh, elastic sheet and see if I can do something now with the malice in a better in a better way. Voilà, je vais replacer maintenant la peau et on va essayer maintenant de travailler à nouveau sur le marteau en espérant que le petit travail que j'ai fait me donne un petit peu plus d'espace de, de vision sur le, sur le marteau, sur le manche du marteau sur lequel j'ai travaillé. 
Une lame de synastique encore, s'il vous plaît, je la reprends. As much better now, because you can see a little bit of the anterior part of the tympanic membrane. So let's see if it's enough for the Mali sandal. I'm going to leave the... Oh, it's too big. I'm going to remove it now. Allez, je vous l'enlève. Table vers moi, s'il vous plaît. Stop. Okay, so let's go back now to the malus. Because that was just the preparation of the, for the dissection. Bon, table en avant. Stop. Maintenant. You see, it's a little bit better. It's not easy, really. I need to go on the other side of the mattress, like this. Now it's better. I couldn't do it before, now I can. And now we are just at the level of the umbo, which is the difficult part. The lower part of the mattress sandal. So you see the position of the distal tip of the needle, which is turned towards the, uh, to the, towards the mattress and not towards the skin. Deeply following the, uh, the line of the bone. Uh, in my opinion, it's deep, definitely related to what has been described by these people, I don't remember the name, who made this uh, very nice paper on section temporal bone related to uh, malus ankylosis, and they found that they never had any uh, ligament fixation. They made something like 200. Uh, Temple bone, and they always found that it was related to a poor epitympanic space and not to uh, to a ligament fixation. So that's interesting. Yep, there we go. So now the malus is completely separated here. So now I need to go to the uh, neck of the malus and the head of the malus to to completely separate the malus, and then I will be able to. Remove the incus. Removing the incus would not be easy in this case again because of the very narrow gap we have. You see how difficult it is. I always have to move my uh, flap. Voilà, je vais continuer à travailler sur le marteau. Ça reste, bon, c'est un petit peu mieux, mais ça reste, vous voyez, très difficile parce que j'ai vraiment pas beaucoup d'espace. tout de suite sur l'os la partie antérieure. The problem is the anterior wall. I, I removed part of it, but it's not large enough. But I don't want to drill out more. So I have to, to deal with this. Okay, now I think it's better. Okay, it's nearly done. And of course I need to check the tympanic membrane because there's a risk here that there is some tear because of the dissection of the, in a very, such a difficult condition. This is the reason why I wanted to put a, a stylastic sheet in the middle between both parts of the flap, not to stick them to each other. But now I think it's fine. We don't have any tear, so it's fine. Bon, donnez-moi la lame de I will put a stylastic sheet in the middle. Because now I can do it. Je vais la couper un petit peu, elle est un peu trop grosse. Mettez-la moi au bout de la micro s'il vous plaît. Okay, good. I don't need a big one, just a small one, which just will help me to find my cleavage plane. There we go, that's all I need. All right, so let's go back now to the middle here. Cleft. 
Voilà, on va re revenir maintenant dans l'oreille moyenne et on va essayer de traiter maintenant ce problème. L'étape suivante va être donc de retirer l'enclume. Et là aussi, ça va être assez complexe puisque j'ai vraiment un espace très étroit pour un osselet qui, vous allez voir, est vraiment très gros. C'est le plus gros des trois de loin. Table vers moi. Stop. Ok, so, voilà la curette, s'il vous plaît. I really need to enlarge more the body reamer here because I won't be able to remove the incus there if I don't do it. And of course we cannot do it too much, but I think this it will be fine. Okay, that's it. All right. So let's now try to remove the incus. On va essayer de retirer l'enclume maintenant. Crochet There we go. So, of course, the, the incus has been removed, but now I need to remove it from the malleus, from the from the medialic left, rotating, luxating the, the incus. Pince, s'il vous plaît. Calmez. Bon, on devrait y arriver, vu que c'est quand même compliqué, parce que j'ai pas d'espace, beaucoup de travail, mais là, c'est bon. Pince, s'il vous plaît. Voilà, donc là, on y est. Maintenant, il faut que je ramène le marteau en arrière. But the next step, the third step, step for the malleus relocation technique is to cut the tense length and high tendon. Alors c'est le direct. Voilà, on va couper un petit tendon et ensuite on va pouvoir ramener le marteau en arrière. And at this stage now the malleus is still attached by the anterior tympanomalar ligament and by the superior ligament. And as you know, I will overstretch the anterior ligament. So the, the, we put a hook close to the neck because if I put it too close to the to the elbow, there's great risk of uh, breaking the malleus. Now I think it's better. You see that now I can relocate it easily, more easily, I would say. And now, now overstretching the anterior ligament, it's fine. And now I need to determine which kind, what kind of uh, reconstruction I will do, what kind of procedure I will use. Or torp. I always try to use torp, but sometimes if the distance between the malleus and the, and the stapes foot plate is less than 5.5, by experience I know that it's better to use a torp. But I think this will be the case here. Okay, measure. Some people will leave it like this because we have a contact between the malleus and the stapes head. Yeah, it's very small. You see, it's five. It could be 5.5. Let me see. Calmez, s'il vous plaît. Bon, je vais voir donc si on peut mettre une prothèse totale. Sinon, ça sera une prothèse partielle. No, I think a torp. I will use a torp. Okay. Bon, peut-être en proclip maintenant, s'il vous plaît. Stop. So I use torp instead of porps in my experience because uh, I previously published this comparative series and I have better results with torp. This is the reason why I always use torp. Ciseaux, s'il vous plaît. All right. So next step now for the synastic bending is to cut the, ten the stapes tendon. Voilà, donc on va couper maintenant un petit tendon pour pouvoir aller attacher la prothèse à l'étrier, cadener. Comme ça, ça doit être complètement coupé. You can see how mobile is the stapes. Ciseaux encore. 
I need to cut the tendon completely, which is not the case here. Everything, every step is difficult. There we go. All right. Canley. <coughs> on va retester les triers, mais là vraiment, vous avez vu que en le touchant, on voit très très bien sa mobilité. Il ouais, n'y a aucun doute, hein, mobilité parfaite de l'étrier. Voilà, c'est bien. Donc on va pouvoir maintenant placer la prothèse. All right. Canley. Oui. Okay, I, pull, I, pull, I was pulling the uh, corded tympani backwards, and now I will cut the prosthesis. This is the uh, Grace, uh, Vincent Grace Torp from Grace Medical. So I want to cut it at 5.5 like this. So I need to push it at 4.5 first, like this, and then pull it back, and then we'll go back to 5.5. Voilà, ça c'est cette prothèse qu'on va donc euh, utiliser et que je coupe maintenant à la longueur de 5 mm 50. Un petit peu encore la pince. I need to remove a little bit more. La pince encore, pour couper, la, pour couper, la coupe pince, oui. Non, non. Oui. Okay, I think it's going to be fine. I want to go to 5.5. There we go, 5.5 is here. And you can see the elastic band is already with the sh with the shaft. Pince, micro pince. Okay. All right, we're going to do it now. Voilà, il faut donc que j'aille placer cette prothèse avec le petit anneau autour de l'étrier de façon à attacher la prothèse. Pince, s'il vous plaît, pince droite. Pince droite. Pour pouvoir uh, l'attacher à l'étrier. I think I need to... There we go, I think it's better here. Bon, alors, on y va. On va placer la prothèse. Now, first part is to... First step is to place the distal tip of the shoe. In contact to the foot plate. Which means that I don't... At the moment, I don't care about the Mali sandal. Just the shoe. And the, and the, the shaft of the process itself. Can they? Changez-moi la spie, s'il vous plaît, ou des, des faites là. Et vous voyez combien grand est apparaître le processus dans ce côté de la moitié de la moitié. Pas beaucoup d'espace de travail. So you can, I'm, uh, ok, c'est tout. Je suis entre le cruce intérieur et le postérieur de la moitié de la moitié. All right. Okay, now I think it's fine. Okay, can we encore? So we need now to introduce the malice within the groove of the prosthesis head. So I will turn, rotate the prosthesis head like this, and then I will put the malice, I will insert the malice within the groove. Crochet out. Voilà, il faut maintenant placer le marteau dans l'encoche que vous avez vu qui est au centre de la tête de cette prothèse. Et la dernière étape, ce sera d'attacher avec le petit anneau. Calmé. Ok, there we go, it's fine. It looks pretty good. It could be like this enough. But I always prefer to use the band to ensure precise stability, as you know. Crochet aussi. Non, pardon, trois de chouk. Ok, so let's go now and put the band around the stapes. Témoin 7, là, s'il vous plaît, d'abord. <coughs> okay. It's not a problem if I dislocate this, the prosthesis at the moment. I will reposition the prosthesis then. So it goes underneath the tendon, so it's not good here. 
around the stapes head and underneath the stapes tendon. It's not good enough, so I will move differently. Can I see what it? There we go. And of course I do that because the the uh, the band the the uh, tendon will help for stabilizing the the band. Okay. Now I think it's pretty good. Voilà, je pense qu'on est bien. Uh, can I? I need to check if the connection is fine. And I will also uh, reposition the flap and see if the tension is good and not strong enough. Not, not too strong, I would say. But this is good. You see the position of the malleus and within the groove. If I move the malleus, we should be able to see the stapes and the prosthesis moving together, just like a single unit. Voilà, vous voyez, donc, dès que je touche le marteau, on a cette fois l'ensemble du montage qui fonctionne bien. So I need now to reposition the flap, and you see the elastic sheet helps. I don't have any more problem now. And uh, another checking, because I want to be sure that it doesn't move. And see the procedure stays in place with a nice contact with both the tympanic membrane and the malleus sandal. So that is good. All right. Voilà, donc l'intervention est terminée. Vous avez vu que la prothèse reste bien dans la position que je lui ai donnée, donc il n'y a pas de problème là-dessus. Pince, s'il vous plaît. On va pouvoir terminer avec la mise en place d'une mèche dans le conduit. Cette mèche, je la retirerai au cinquième jour avec un audiogramme le lendemain, donc au sixième. Allez-y. En sachant que le résultat n'est pas forcément immédiat dans ces types de reconstructions, hein, loin de là d'ailleurs. Donc il faut s'attendre à ce qu'on n'ait pas tout de suite euh, le résultat attendu à la sortie. L'amélioration va, va, va s'étaler probablement sur plusieurs semaines et nous nous verrons au troisième mois pour un bilan plus complet. Voilà, je vous dis à très bientôt et merci beaucoup.